webinar is the power of photography and video, uh, and we're going to focus on how that helps enhance your online visibility. So thank you so much for joining. Uh, one thing to cover here before I get started, you should have the go to webinar uh, little uh, menu bar or tool, if you will. Within that, you'll notice that there is the ability to chat or ask questions. Um, uh, during the presentation here, uh, it will just be us on this end uh, going through the presentation, but please feel free to go ahead and type in some questions there and then we'll save some time at the end uh, with time permitted to kind of cover those questions. We're going to do our best to get you guys out of here uh, within the hour uh, and I hope that you, that you enjoy what we have to show. So thank you very much. Appreciate that and we're going to get started here. <coughs> A, li a little bit about Redstream, guys. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, my name is Josh Wise. I'm the VP of Business Development. I'm going to do the intro here, and then I'm going to pass it along to uh, Joe Jenkins here for the presentation. But for those of you uh, not familiar with Redstream or not a Redstream customer, I'm going to go through this slide here real quick. Uh, who we are, who is Redstream? Redstream was established in 2005. Our headquarter office or our, our office location is in Denver, Colorado. And we have about 21 employees here on staff at Redstream. Uh, about three of those employees are remote. We've got a couple programmers, one in Michigan, one in Minnesota, and a sales rep down in Austin, Texas. And uh, we're uh, about to add a, an additional sales rep, um, and he will also be in Minnesota. Uh, as far as what we do here at Redstream, um, we have a software side of the house, and then we have internet service side of the house. So on the software side, Restream provides a reservation software, uh, an online booking engine. We provide connection to uh, OTAs or the GDS system for online visibility with major travel websites. Uh, as far as the internet service side of the house, we provide both custom and template website solutions as well as uh, online internet marketing services, everything from search and optimization to pay-per-click, uh, social media marketing, um, and everything in between. Redstream focuses specifically on independent properties. Uh, we do not work with chain properties, uh, larger branded uh, chains, uh, mostly, or I should say, all independents. And then I would say our wheelhouse is those properties with 100 rooms or less. Uh, that doesn't mean that we can't or won't work with properties uh, over that size, but I would say 99% of our install base of customers is 100 rooms or less. As far as what we do, or why we do it, excuse me, this, this is an important one to me and, and a big reason why I've been here almost six years now. The founders of Redstream have really set the tone for what we're all about here, and, and the current owner, Christian Holmson, continues to set this tone. Um, the founders grew up in Estes Park, Colorado, and their family owned and operated a small independent property, and they got to see the challenges and the joys that go along with running an independent smaller property and trying to compete with the big players in the industry that have unlimited marketing budgets. So that's really what the foundation of this company was based upon and the principles that we have here is we want to provide very high-end products and services for independent properties and we want to do it at affordable price and we've been doing so since 2005 and we're very excited to announce our new cloud reservation software that's going to be coming out here uh, towards the end of summer. So, so please uh, stay tuned for that. As far as uh, the employees that we staff here, we hire passionate professionals. Um, this is very important to us. <clears throat> we like to also get people that have experience within the hospitality industry uh, in certain situations. But you know, having someone, as you guys have experienced at your properties, that has the skills is great. But what you can't teach people is the passion and the dedication and the, the drive to want to help people. So that's what we're all about here at Redstream. And then lastly here, the education. What I tend to find in talking to hundreds of properties every month is, is that each property is very specific with what they know in their, their market segment in their area. The benefit of Redstream is that we touch properties all across the, the nation here. So we get to share experiences and, and trials and tribulations that other properties go through, and, and we get to share that out with other people. So um, I'm, I'm going to turn it over here to Joe uh, for, for the couple of slides, and I'll jump back in and cover the table of contents. But 
Uh, just real quick about Joe from my perspective. I've, I've had the benefit of working with Joe for almost six years now, and Joe's been with the company a little bit longer than that. And Joe is the embodiment of what we believe in here at Redstream, his passion, his attention to detail. It's very infectious for the rest of the staff, so, so I'm very excited to you guys get to spend some time with him here today. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thanks for attending. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I was born in Wisconsin, and that's kind of, you know, I started photography in high school, and I was really drawn to the creative aspect of sharing an image with every, everyone. Um, and that led me to actually move to Colorado to attend photography school up in the mountains in 1998, and um, really haven't looked back since. Um, kind of taught photography, Photoshop. Um, I went back to the college where I attended and taught a Photoshop semester. It was uh, very interesting to you know, actually teach something that I, would, I just, was just taught. Um, but my passion is actually you know, creating the image and you know, getting the right product out to the proper people. Um, from there, I've uh, worked in one of the most prestigious real estate agencies in Aspen, Colorado, shooting photos and creating video tours for them. And then, you know, I decided to take my passions to start designing websites in the hospitality industry in 2003. So I've been with Restream for seven years now. Um, I'm the graphics and media specialist. So if you work with me in the past, I do website design. I also do photography and video for clients. I'm a golf enthusiast. Love the thrill of competition. Really gets me excited to go out there and compete. If any you actually golf, I'm about a three handicap, so if you understand the terminology, that's where I sit. I love cooking. I make an amazing honey glazed fried chicken and cinnamon crumb cake with strawberry coolis. Here's a photo of my cinnamon crumb cake. <laughs> now he's just showing off, right? Uh, so real quick here, I'll jump back in. Uh, table of contents of what we're going to cover today. Um, the value of photography and its importance. Uh, then we want to kind of uh, show you guys some differences between hiring a professional versus an amateur, uh, help you guys understand the differences so that you can make the proper business decisions for your property moving forward. Uh, then we're going to jump in and cover some benefits of video. Uh, is it important? Why it's important? Some statistics related to the industry to help you determine if that's something that you would like to display on your website for your property moving forward. Um, and then from there, obviously, some things to consider as it relates to video and how that works. Uh, we'll cover some frequently asked questions, both on the video subject and the photography subject that we hear all the time. Uh, we feel this is a good representation of what the majority of properties ask. And again, as you have questions, type them in the chat question box, and we'll go through those at the end. Uh, we want to try and cover some costs within the industry, not just from restrooms perspective, but a range in general, so you guys can be prepared for, uh, for those of you that haven't had professional photography before, what you should be looking at in terms of a budget, and then lastly there with the questions. Uh, <clears throat> as far as the value of photography, the photography, guys, now it should be as good as your property, okay? And if you have a gorgeous place, your photo should display exactly that. So, so what exactly does that mean? What you're trying to do through your photography is you're trying to provide credibility of your property. This is a good way for people to understand what it is that they're coming to expect as it relates to your property. And by showing them the photography related to your property, you know, that is building that credibility. Uh, visual stimulants are excellent. Attention spans are very short in today's day and age. It helps paint a picture uh, of the ideal vacation and the experience. Okay? So by having a, a very nice property and having very nice photography, you're selling exactly that. You're selling that experience. Uh, I know for myself personally, I recently went out to Carmel, California. And in order to make that purchase decision of the many properties out there, the photography was the majority decision maker factor for me personally because I got to see what my wife and I were going to experience on that trip. And statistics within the industry show that, that the users, the guests out there are doing the same exact thing. 
Um, as far as uh, helping confirm the, the interest in the purchase decision, there's many factors that we all go through and, and guests go through in a purchase decision. Obviously, price is one of them, uh, location, obviously, but, but the photography is what's helping sell it. Um, and you'll notice on that fourth bullet point there, as it relates to driving additional revenue, uh, here's an example for you. If I'm out shopping for, call it a, a Honda Civic, and I'm seeing pictures of a 1999 Honda Civic, but yet I'm looking to buy a 2014 Honda Civic, it's not really representing what it is that I'm looking to spend my money on. Same can be said with photography, guys. Having updated photography, updating that experience, and showing people exactly what they're going to get in real time is very important to help push that purchase decision. Um, and then the last point that I'd like to make here, uh, this statistic here, uh, consumers value imagery more so than product information, product descriptions, or ratings and review. 67% deem imagery to be the most important. So really think about that stat. If your existing website is very content, very text heavy, what this is saying here is that 67% of people want to see more photos to help them make that purchase decision over that text or over those ratings and reviews. Yes, it's all important, but 67% doesn't lie, and that's the importance and the value there in photography. All right, now we're going to talk about, you know, professionals versus amateur. You know, is a price tag really worth it? Um, you can use this analogy where I have an amazing fried chicken, but that does not make me a professional chef. You know, restaurants aren't going to be calling me up to be the cook for the night. Um, it's just, I haven't heard my phone ringing yet. So, so I'm going to go through the be benefits of a professional and also the benefits of an amateur. Um, with the professional, you're going to get, you know, experience. You're going to have the, you know, them using advanced equipment. They're going to be using refined techniques. They're going to know how to shoot lodging rooms in a confined space. Um, they're used to working long hours um, and they're very experienced with photo editing and you're probably going to get quality over quantity. Um, a few, you know, key points there is, you know, there are specific tools that professionals do use, whether it be a tilt shift lens or specific lighting, whether it's hot lights, strobe lights, um, different te techniques that they've refined throughout years and years of, you know, learning and, you know, on the experience, it's going to really show to the quality. And a lot of uh, properties I've been to have really small confined rooms. I don't get the, you know, a big spacious living room to shoot. It's a small confined room. You have a sh really tight area to shoot with. And a lot of people just use wide-angle lenses, which is how you're going to capture the room. But you have to be very careful and cautious. You're not making sure the bed looks like it's a massive, massive king-size bed, you know, distorting the imagery. And you have to make sure your lines are vertical and straight. If things are askew or things are kind of, you know, fish-eyed, it could really throw off the quality of the actual work. And then photo editing, it's very important to, you know, work with the photographer to make sure your property is represented in the right way. Not necessarily faking it, but you know you can re represent it in the right way with the right Photoshop techniques to balance color temperatures of lighting, whether it be tungsten, fluorescent, things of that nature. And then the benefits of an amateur, you know, it's probably going to be cost friendly, and you're going to have, you know, they're going to be available to you whenever you need them because they're not going to be out there shooting constantly to where their books session after session, so that's very, you know, appealing to a lot of people. And you're going to have qual or quantity over quality. Um, a lot of people, photographers, amateurs, will go, go in there and shoot, 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 try and get as much as they can, deliver it to you. Kind of have to look at, is that what I'm looking for? Does that represent my property in the right way? Here's a really good stat. 90% info transmitted to the brain is visual, and visuals get processed 60,000 times faster than text. You know, and that goes back to the stat previously. 
visuals, you know, people can process those a lot quicker. People can go from page to page. They're looking at your rooms, your accommodations, you know, the specials you offer. What kind of images are you portraying? Are they selling your property? Are they selling the experience? That's really what you want to drive home. Okay, guys. I uh, want you to participate in a poll question, if you don't mind. Uh, so before I display this poll question, what I'd like you to do here is I'd like you to look at these two pictures, room one versus room two, and which of these photographs entices you to stay in the room? Is one of these more representative of what it is that you'd like to see? Um, so we'd, we'd be curious to get your feedback here. So I'm going to push out this poll question to you. Um, and you guys should be able to uh, see that poll question here in a second. So do me a favor and go ahead and, and take the time here to answer this question. And then we'd like to kind of talk to you about these two particular photos. And most importantly, we want to see what you guys select, and, and hopefully uh, this goes the way we're thinking it will. So we've got about 11% of you that haven't voted yet. So about 10 more seconds. Go ahead and get your answer in there into that. OK. So. Let me see here. Close this down, and I should be able to share the results with you. And you should see that here in a second. Um, OK, so 100% of you, 100% of all 20 of you that have voted and that are attending here had picked this second room. So Joe, why don't you go ahead and explain the difference here between these two? So give me one second. Let me, sorry, let me shut this down. Hide this, and you guys should be able to see the screen here in one second. Okay, go ahead. So you can see both photos. Um, they're actually the exact same room. This client called up, needed some photography, and I was looking at the property from their point of view, from their photos, their current photos, and I was like, this place is pretty interesting but I had no idea they had the views, they were at the elevation they were, you know, the quality of the furniture. I had no idea that this is what they were trying to sell. So I was tasked with this, and I was able to capture this great shot. You know, we staged the room a little bit, um, made sure the bed was nicely, you know, folded, had some decorations on the desk, magazines, flowers, very simple staging. Um, but then what we captured was, you know, the sunset and the view, um, very enticing. You know, that's the experience that, you know, this client was trying to portray, but they just did not do that with their current photography. So we were, we were able to do that. And this, is a, this is a great example of an amateur versus a professional, okay? In room one, you're showing where someone's sleeping. Well, yeah, is that important? Of course, they're spending the night there, but in room two, you're showing the experience of the, that particular lodging accommodation. You're enticing that guest to come out and spend money with your property because not only are they going to get the bed, they're going to get the entire experience itself. So very important for you guys to understand the difference between an amateur shot and a professional shot. And I'm sure a lot of people out there would say, I would pay more money for the room on the right compared to the room on the left as well. So, you know, you're... Photography can also dictate your rates as well. Um, here's a shot. Here, this is kind of explaining some Photoshop work that I've done. Uh, very simple. There are some power lines in the way. I had to remove them. And also, after I showed it to the client, the client asked to, for me to remove the building that was on the right-hand side of the image. So I was tasked with that. After that, they loved it. You know, it was, you just don't want to make sure that it's not overly photoshopped. It doesn't look unrealistic. You know, I've seen work to where it looks unrealistic, but you know, maybe my eye is a little bit more trained than others. But you know, they they passed me with that, and I was able to accomplish that for them. Here's a shot of a patio area um, with a client that 
beautiful patio, patio area. The, you know, the lighting is beautiful. The whole setting is beautiful. Um, but it didn't really portray, it didn't lead me through with the actual image that I had. So I was able to use some, you know, lighting to really enhance, you know, the bushes, the trees, the foliage. And it really helps draw your eye through the photograph and look at the entire space rather than just looking at the highlights and the, you know, where the light's hitting right away. So this will definitely help draw your eye through the entire image. Here's a shot that the client wanted to sell romance. That was their main goal with this photograph. And what we did was we shot it at dusk. The dusk lighting really sets the mood. And we had to stage the bed. So staging all these flowers, lining them up in a row, you know, making sure everything was done very properly and the lighting was key to really showcasing this room. And, you know, I feel like it sells romance and the client loved it. Here's another example of just breakfast and how professional photography can really help sell some of your amenities, whether it be, you know, breakfast, dining, or, you know, like a spa service, things like that. And then you want to be uh, always thinking about if your property is seasonal. You know, are you, do you get majority of your business always, you know, throughout the year and is it the same? Or do you have seasons like winter and summer and fall? Um, this client asked us to um, shoot the property in different seasons because it really is a different feeling. It is, you know, a different clientele. You're always going to have people looking at your website, but they might be going there for different reasons. So um, think about getting seasonal photographs, having them changed on your website, because that will really help sell the experience. You don't want a summer photo when it's winter time because it just doesn't sell the winter experience. Now we're going to start talking about video. And again, if you guys have questions throughout this, please answer them and hopefully we can answer them at the end. So 58% of respondents consider companies that produce video content to be more trustworthy. So if you're online shopping and you see clients with you know, a product or some kind of service, they offer video, they have videos that you can watch, you're gonna be more engaged, people are gonna be more enticed to make a purchase decision because of that. 73% of U.S. adults are more likely to purchase after watching an online video that explains a product or service. Most videos are probably watched on iPhones and they're probably watched after they've already been to your website. So you're sitting down watching TV, people are probably going to be browsing on their phones, maybe looking at you know, other properties. And if you have a video, you might entice them to more because you keep them engaged longer. So videos are very important, especially having them on your mobile device is going to help engage your viewers. Here's a great stat. According to Forrester, video has become so prominent in hospitality that 45% of leisure travelers and more than 70% of business travelers were more likely to book as a result of viewing video. That stat, I think, is huge, just because we know that people are actually looking at video to make sure they want to go to the proper place and that you're selling the experience to them, and they're going to make that decision. Um, to the right, I'm going to play you a short little video clip. Um, it's just like a little you know, demo reel of some uh, places that I've gone. And this video may appear choppy to you, so what we're going to do is we're going to send this out afterwards as well so you can view, but pay attention to some of the actual types of movements the camera's making. Not just, it's not just the camera where it's moving left, moving right. There's actually movement to it, and it has like an emotion. So pay attention to that. Hopefully this video will not be choppy for you.
with the technology that we're using, it would be too hard to get the audio in here. We want it to be, did not want it to be blurry. So if this video is choppy, it just depends on the different internet connections that everyone's using that we're all doing this uh, go to webinar sharing. But I think you guys can experience that particular video and try and understand how that's going to really resonate the experience of the property. You notice how there's some outside footage in there as well. Uh, last time I checked, people don't spend 100% uh, of their time in the room 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're coming there to experience not only the property, but everything else that, that your city, your town has to offer. So now I'm going to talk about things to consider with the video. You know, you have to make sure you tell your unique story and what makes you different. Um, a lot of properties aren't alike. They're in different locations. So what's going to tell your story? What are people looking for when they visit your property. Um, length of video. Don't try and fit everything in one video. Um, sometimes too much information can distract the viewers and they'll get lost. So if you do one overview video, try to shorten it up a bit. Maybe two minutes. Um, I've made videos where one minute is great because it really gets the point across and it doesn't seem like they're forced to watch the entire thing. So you know, think about the length of your video. Break them apart into separate videos. If you keep them engaged, it's more important than having one long video. Keep them moving through your website. You know, have an overview of your property. Talk about dining, area activities, you know, accommodations. Those are things that people are looking for if they're staying at your property. And if you can't hold your viewers' attention with video, you know, the video is kind of pointless. I, if you have people dropping off after 30 seconds of a two-minute video, it's not really, you know, hitting them hard. It's not really making them think, be like, I want to go to that place. So um, make sure your videos of quality and uh, they're really going to think about your property after that, not just like, oh, okay. Make them think about it. You know, you have to connect with them on an emotional level. Um, audio will help do this, but you have to connect them on a very emotional level because they're spending money to go on vacation with their family or a loved one, and you have to connect with them on an emotional level visually. Um, give them a sense of where they are. You know, like Josh was just saying, they're not always in the room. They're going out to experience the town, the city, the activities, and then also provide calls to action. Make sure they go to your website afterwards. If they find you on YouTube, make sure they can click on your website and go book a room. Audio for your video. This is so important. I've been told, you know, everybody's heard of this, pictures are worth a thousand words. But I've also heard from other people, audio is worth 10,000. So make sure your audio is good quality can be a di big disappointment if you have great audio, great video, but bad audio. So make sure you kind of have great audio, whether it's music, voiceovers, things like that. Spend the extra money on great music. Music will help tell your story, and it will tell how you should feel during the video. It's all about your brand. It should complement your message. Um, I put a couple websites in here that I love using. Um, Marmoset Music and the Music Bed. You know, for licensing of music, it's about $200 for commercial use. But the great thing about these websites, they let you pick, you know, a type of mood that you're trying to go for. They're letting you pick a genre. They're letting you pick different characteristics that you're trying to, you know, captivate with your music. So. It will help you filter it down, but great tool to use. I mean, you could just go look at music yourself and just see, oh, that says what my property is. That's how I want people to feel about my property. So audio is very important. And then move the camera. I know a lot of you people probably won't be shooting the actual video, but Keep this in mind when watching videos and think about what's, you know, when you're having a videographer on your property, be like, 
oh, I saw this video. I love the way this told was telling the story. So think about making sure the camera is being moved and you know dynamic camera movements, whether it's a slider, crane movements, time lapses, steady cam shots. If you saw in the previous video, hopefully it wasn't choppy for you. Um, there was some dynamic camera movements with the slider. I used some cranes. Um, I didn't have any time lapses, but you know I can show you examples of that as well. So make sure the movements have a purpose. Use them to help tell your story. Um, don't just move the camera just because you can. Um, the viewer may get lost, or some people call it getting seasick. You know, because the camera is moving left, the camera is moving right. Make sure it's working with your story and not taking them away from it. I'm going to go right into the video FAQs. Um, a lot of people ask me how long should my video be. Um, you know, I was just talking about this previously. Think about your property and imagine you have one minute to talk about your property. What would you say? So I feel that TV has changed all of our attention spans. You know, people are always turning their DVRs on and not even watching commercials anymore. So people are always going, 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 always looking next. So imagine you have one minute to talk about your property and how would you portray that message? So think about them being shorter and breaking them up. Should videos have voiceovers or interviews? I think voiceovers, if done professionally, can make a huge impact. It helps tell the story and drive home it you're selling propositions. Sometimes hearing a voice while visuals are displaying on your screen, it actually helps tell your story. Whether you're you know, you're showing someone running on a beach, but you're really trying to say tranquil, you know, peaceful, but it doesn't the video doesn't say that, you can actually put that in their brain that this is what's happening right now. So voiceovers can be very beneficial. And then having a live person on camera is also very intriguing. Visitors learn the personality of you and the property, but try to make it casual. I think when people get on camera, it feels like a production because you're like, action. And everybody freezes up. So try to make it very casual. Have someone ask you a question. So you can talk about the passion behind your property, whether it be the combinations, how you got started, you know, where you're going in the future, the special minis that you guys have to offer. Make sure it's passionate and it'll come through a lot better than if you actually have a script and it's like, okay, I gotta talk about this. Now let's go to this point. So try to make it casual and it'll actually be more enjoyable for you. And good audio is important. Make sure you step away from running water, um, cars driving by in the wind, and make sure you're mic'd up properly. You know, it's, I've had people where they want to be filmed right next to the ocean, but, you know, you got waves crashing and it's like, I can't hear your voice. You know, it's beautiful scenery, but it just isn't going to sell the whole point that I'm trying to get across. So make sure you step away from things, uh, be cautious. You know, when you're getting people interview you and things like that, so step away from those types of things. Um, a lot of people ask me how long does the video editing process take. Obviously, it's going to be different for every project. You know, it all depends on the length of the video. You know, you have color correction, and then you have audio where you're actually working it with the video. So things will always vary depending on your specific project. But if you are working with a videographer creating your video and they're using storyboards, they pre-plan and they have the scenes and they're shot properly, this will help speed up the process because they shoot a scene, they know exactly where that's going in the video. And they shoot another scene, they know where that's going in the video. This will help speed up the process rather than taking, you know, two hours worth of footage and just putting it together because they got to tell a story kind of backwards. Here's your property. 
and I got to piece together a story. So if you pre-plan, you know, make sure things are shot properly, it does help speed up the processes. And then I say pre-plan, make sure you get involved with your story. It's your property. You have the passion about your property. That's why you're working there. That's why you own on your property, so make sure you're involved with it. And then people always ask, how should I place a video on my site? Um, some people just prefer the easy method of just going to YouTube, uploading it to YouTube. I think that's a great way to start, but make sure you talk with your web developer. Um, they might be able to place a video directly on your website, and this will help, you know, Google will actually give you benefit to having videos directly hosted on your website. If you have 10 videos on one page, might not be the best thing, but if you have one video on your website, maybe three, it's okay to host them on your website. But always think about having them also on YouTube, so therefore you have them in both places. If you do have the videos on your website, make sure you use HTML5 video players, because if you use Flash, your video will not play on Apple devices, iPad, iPhone. With everybody watching videos, sitting in their chair at home, watching TV, they're, they're not going to be able to watch it if they're on their Apple devices. So be cautious of what kind of video player you have on your website. Now we're going to go back into some photography you know, questions that I get asked all the time. How many rooms can you shoot in a day? Well, on average, I can shoot four to six rooms per day. And obviously, this will vary depending on the advanced staging and the client-specific requests. Um, as you, if you remember the shot where I shot that dust shot with the flower petals, that staging obviously took a lot more time. It was a lot more involved. And that took me away from some other actual tasks that I could shoot on property. but that photograph was very important to the client, so make sure you pick specific shots that are important to you. And this does not include exterior photos or shooting video at the same time, so. And then what are, what are the shooting hours? Obviously all photographers are different. Um, we encourage you to speak with them in advance to getting a sense for their shooting hours. Um, Redstream routinely shoots at sunrise and sunset. We try to maximize your budget, you know, to get the best lighting possible. So always ask that question. This is a big one. I think this probably might be the first question to get asked all the time is who owns the photography? Most photographers will do, it, do this two different ways. Um, the first way is that you pay for daily rate for the photographer and you will own the imagery and however the photographer may have rights to use in his or her, her portfolio. And the second option is you're going to pay a, a daily rate, but it's going to be much lower. But the photographer owns the rights to the images. Um, and then you have to pay licensing fees. So a lot of people are really hesitant about this, but some people like this method, but you know the different fees that you're going to pay are you know applied to media types that you're going to be using the images for, whether it's web-based, whether it's print. You could be throwing some images on, on a video on YouTube or something. So always ask those questions up front. And then, you know, when you do have to pay the licensing fee, you're going to have to renew if you want to reuse the images the next year or however long your <coughs> agreement is for. So be cautious of that. And we feel like the best option is the first one, and that's going to be the most convenient for you. And then everybody asks, how many images do I get? Here's an example of a two-day shoot. And I think this is going to vary depending on the scope of work outlined by you, the client, and also the photographer. So think about this when you're kind of going through the pre-planning. And you may get, you know, 40 images from one photographer and 20 from another. A lot of you might be thinking, well, I want to get 40 images. I feel like I'm getting more for my money, you know. But 
is the quality going to be in those images? Is the lighting going to be the way you want it to be portrayed? Is it selling the experience that you guys are trying to sell? So think about that and remember this is your property and you should have the desired look that you're going for. And sometimes out of those 40 images, you might get five great images that just speak perfectly to your property, but you know, how those other 35 images are going to be? Are they usable? Do they sell your property like the previous five did? So get thinking about that. And then here's some stuff. Make sure you get involved, like I said, to make sure you're getting the images that you desire. I've found success working alongside the client as well as working solo and just running with my vision after obviously talking with the client. But you're going to know your property, so work with the photographer, and you're going to get the best possible product. I guess you can think about it this way. When you order a steak, the waiter is always going to ask you, how do you want it cooked? Well, you're not going to say, well, however the chef thinks. You're probably going to say medium, you know, medium well, whatever. You know, it's it's your product. It's you're going to know what you want. So, I strongly agree working with a photographer and or the videographer to make sure you get the desired product. Um, here's some preparation tips. If you guys want to take some notes, or you know, we're going to send this out later, so you'll be able to you know jot these down. But I strongly feel like. You know, you're always on property. If you do hire a photographer, scout the property before the shoot, you know, maybe a week before the shoot, different times of the week. So therefore you can pay close attention to the lighting because lighting's always going to move, obviously. But you want to pay close attention to say, I love the way the light's coming in this room in the morning. Or, you know, my patio area is really dynamic at this time of day. So just pay attention to those kind of things. I think it will help. A, the photographer out, and it's going to help you get the desired product that you're actually looking for. So make a shot list of, you know, the priority from top to bottom. Obviously, you can't get everything shot usually in the time frame. So make sure you have a priority list, and the photographer will work with you to make sure you get the images that are among the top. So interiors, bathrooms, exteriors. You have dining, you have lifestyle type shots, things that are going to sell your experience, sell your property. Everybody's unique, so you're going to have specific needs, but make sure, you know, if you need one signature shot of the exterior, make sure that's a top priority. Obviously, images do take time to stage, so by having this list, it's actually going to help. Um, I've had to rearrange items before, move furniture around, move chairs from one side of the room to the other. You know, all this stuff takes time. So you, you may think you can get everything in, but make sure that shot list is, you know, up to speed and you're on board with the photographer, so therefore you can discuss those things. I've also had to, you know, steam the sheets to make sure everything's nice and tidy. So shot list is important. And don't be afraid to ask questions. Even prior to the shoot, ask questions. Um, they're going to explain to you why they may shoot, some, shoot something a certain way. Or if they're shooting something, they may be like, oh, I'm going to Photoshop this later to make sure you get the desired effect. But you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. And then prepare props for styling. If you're shooting video, you might want to use models. I've had most people, you know, get their friends involved, maybe some employees that work on property. Um, when shooting video, having models, it's more intriguing. Having the actual people in the video will entice the viewer a lot more. Getting flowers, you know, books, wine to sell that romance, um, towels, whether they're for the beach or, you know, for the room that you want to throw in the bed, um, suitcases. Um, to say, hey, someone just arrived here, you know, selling that whole experience. Um, also, activity accessories, whether it be like snorkel gear or hiking boots or hats and gloves, jackets, 
you know, sometimes adding a pop of color to your images will really help move the eye around in the imagery and it'll help tell that actual experience and that story that you're trying to portray. And then walk around with the photographer and show your notes and discuss the strategy. Obviously, you know, they're probably not on your property all the time, so talk with them, show them your notes. They're going to be really appreciative of all the work that you've put into it, and then you're going to get a better product in the long run. So um, work with them very closely and have fun with it. It's your property. You know, you're selling something that you love and this is what you do, so make sure you have fun with it and the product's going to be a lot better. Now we're going to go through some costs associated with photography and video. Costs for, for photography, you know, daily fees can range from a thousand to three thousand dollars depending on the company you work with. Um, sometimes a special equipment is required. There's going to be additional fees. Um, discuss this in advance. Sometimes you can't because it's not really planned out or you're not working with the photographer directly, you know, prior to. So always have them back in mind there might be additional expenses. Um, I can give you an example. I was on a shoot in Colorado here and there was construction across the street. The client wanted to get this one shot. It was impossible with the construction, so they actually rented a, a crane for a half a day. And actually, I was able to get that shot because I was elevated a little bit higher than I could not get, you know, standing in back of a pickup truck. I had to get like, you know, 20 feet up in the air to get that shot. So always think outside the box to see if, you know, there is going to be something that you need to get that specific shot. Um, travel fees, obviously, if they're, you know, out of state or out of the area. So make sure you set this all up front, be prepared, and it's going to cost anywhere from 500 to several thousand. Restreams averages and travel fees have been around $700, so that's just probably over the past three years that we've, you know, taken an average and that's what we've come, come to conclude. Costs associated with video. Um, set expectations with time of video. You know, I said this before, pre-plan, storyboard creation, so important because that's going to help set the budget for actually shooting the video, you know. If you're going to use special techniques, you're going to get aerial footage. You know, all this stuff is very important to pre-plan and have them work before they're actually on location. There's going to be, you know, equipment for special situations, you know, aerial shots. It might be special lighting that they're going to need, um, things like that. You may have to hire models. They're going to help tell your story. People are going to relate to the models a lot more than just kind of an empty shot. So. Someone biking down a path, you know, might be more intriguing than just showing the path. Music is key, so you're going to have to pay a licensing fee for the music, but trust me, it's worth the extra money. I've, you know, when I first started doing this, I picked always the cheap music, and my videos were okay, but they didn't really drive home the actual point I was getting across, and as I found these and worked on these websites, the music is so important and it really helps tell your story. So make sure you get the quality music in the end. Video editing, you know, it's not a quick process. It's not just putting a bunch of clips and music in there and basically done. There's actually a special art to it to where people specifically do video editing. So. There may be extra, extra fees associated with video editing because of the time frame and kind of going back and forth and the edits involved. And each video project, the prices are going to be different. So those are typically charged at hourly rate. So just prepare, prepare for that because estimates are usually given in advance based on your video goals. But like I said,
the board creation and the pre-planning is going to be very important. And also travel fees like above, you know, those are going to vary depending on the equipment and the, you know, baggage stuff. And then here are some things to be aware of. Video productions usually cost more than photography. There's a lot more planning, a lot more staging, a lot more equipment that's involved. Um, thus, you know, it's going to cost more for the completed production. Um, your photographer may, be, may have the ability to shoot video as well, but make sure you plan for time involved to set up the different gear as it does take time. Your photographer may come in and be doing both. You can't just have them go one room and be like, all right, shoot the photos, get the video right away. You know, it is a different set of gear. Um, they may be using cranes for a specific shot, so there are some different gear that's going to actually increase the time on site, so think about those things. And then if you want to help speed up the process with the photographer or the videographer, um, you can always try to work ahead of them, set up rooms, stage rooms, um, get flowers, you know, plants moved around, have the models be prepared for the actual shoot. So, and right now we're going to do a poll question. Yeah, so last question, guys, and then one more closing slide after this, so bear with us. We're almost done. We're at about a little over an hour, a couple minutes over an hour here, so do us a favor and participate in this particular question if you don't mind. Uh, you should be able to see this on your screen here in the next second or so. So basically what we're trying to understand here is, is uh, you know, a lot of people have uh, not really paid a lot of attention to photography and budgets related to it. It gets neglected and afterthought. So we're curious to know of you guys uh, participating here, how many of you actually have put aside a budget for photography this year, 2014, whether it's already taken place or it's on the docket or you plan to schedule it, uh, you know, what's that look like here? So. Do you have a budget in place? Uh, do you not have a budget in place? Or are you still not really sure about the value? So help us understand this, and I'll give you guys about 30 seconds, and then we'll share that. So about 67% of you have voted. So a couple more seconds here, and then I'll share the results. Okay, guys, let me close this poll down, and I'm going to share it with you, and you should see the results there. So 55% of you, a little over half, have said, yes, yes, Joe, yes, Josh, I do have a budget uh, for this year, which is excellent, phenomenal uh, photography, videography, it's important to you, that's a great thing. About 45% of you, a little less than half, have said, no, uh, I have not. So. Uh, in, in conclusion here, guys, hopefully uh, what we've done here today is we've been able to share with you uh, some relative information related to both photography, related to video. Hopefully you guys have taken some takeaways today as it relates to its importance based on the statistics, based on the industry of hospitality. Hopefully you guys understand that photography is, shouldn't be an afterthought. It helps share the experience of the potential guests or guests coming on site and how that impacts their purchase decisions in the buying process. Um, now, in general here, uh, just like the airlines say, we understand there's a lot of different options out there in ways of photography, whether it be professional, whether it be amateur. Uh, we hope that we've shared enough information with you guys today to help you determine if going the professional versus the amateur route uh, is viable for your business. And then uh, obviously a shameless plug here, Redstream certainly does photography and video services uh, presented here by Joe today, and, and Joe handles all of that uh, for us in-house. So whether you're interested in learning more, whether you select another vendor 
uh, and you'd like to make sure that you, you've got all your angles covered and you'd like some consultation from us, or uh, most importantly, if you think that's a service you'd like Redstream to help you out with, by all means, please reach out to us. We'd love to help you. Uh, some other information here. Uh, the next webinar that we have is the last Thursday of this month. It will be on our uh, cloud reservation software. Again, that product should be coming out towards the end of this summer, and I'm actually going to be walking people through a demo. So whether you have Redstream or you have a different provider, if that's of interest, great. Uh, also, uh, you can learn more about uh, all the education that Redstream is trying to share uh, with our experience and our expertise with the, the lodging industry by visiting our blog here. Um, and lastly, you know, if you guys have any specific questions for Joe, reach out to him. Here's his personal contact information. Uh, and we'll also, through our webinar page, be posting this video uh, in the next couple of days so you guys can revisit that. So thank you all very much. Appreciate you guys attending. Uh, love to hear from you guys if you have anything. Yes, thanks, everyone. All right, guys. Have a great day.